see if I can get it in focus. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You might be wondering what this is. It's not fiber, it's a replacement for Lorenzo. He was guaranteed for a year. That's a long story. We ordered it because we were like, he's dead. I'm not 100% sure he's dead now. So I'm not sure where we're going from this. But anyway, not a fiber item. Sorry. What we're really here for today, let me actually turn you. So while I was spinning like the second day of Tour de Fleas or maybe the third, uh, live like we do hey if you've been doing it how fun was it right Luther started barking because someone delivered something and I was like I didn't even order anything I wonder what it is I did order something I just didn't think it would get here as fast as it did so that's what was going on it's in here and we're gonna try something I've never tried on my channel before but I have done once before and I'm actually gonna show you that situation as well but first Let's unbox it. Want to? Let's do it. Many of you will know. Really, you'll know it unless you're new here. I love to dye wool and silk and really all animal fibers. I do a lot of it. I love it. John and I were actually dyeing this morning. We did a dozen braids and I've got a dozen more soaking and actually the ones we did this morning are cooking and it's hot so we had this whole conversation I, I should just unbox this but anyway okay so I'm also packing orders this morning and I need this box which is why I'm filming this right now <laughs> because Karen made a huge order and I need a box to mail it to her in and this is the one I am gonna use so ready it's not as exciting inside this is Dish, dish towel cotton that I am going to dye with you guys at least a chunk of it so let's see um, it's from Great Northern Weaving I have talked about them a million times I love their dishcloth cotton it's 8-2 cotton now I can explain it there has been problems with them and I don't think just with them getting some of the different colors dyed of the dishcloth cotton so I guess in my mind I was thinking you know it's sort of stinks because if it is wool I just dye my own if I can't get a color that I want and I've never really felt that great about dyeing plant fibers there's good reasons for that we'll talk about it in the dyeing process I have dyed cotton before I'm gonna show you what I've got that I've dyed so I dyed these with a friend years ago they've been in my stash for like probably like four years this one is got a little bit of purple but it's mostly pink and gray and then these two were dyed together they're just like different shades of blue and gray <laughs> I know shocker that I would do that right this was like the very beginning of my channel we didn't film it we just had a dye day and it was for fun and one of the things that I stress about a ton when I dye cotton is that so much rinses out. It never really exhausts and I hate that and I feel guilty about it. Um, I also hate the rinsing process because it just bleeds for such a long time. So we're going to dye some of this here and I'm going to try some different things. I found a weaver on YouTube, I don't think she still makes videos, but I'm gonna link you as we do these, who dyes her own cotton for like dish towels and stuff like that. It's gonna get washed. She puts it with white sometimes, so I feel like she must be pretty sure it's not going to bleed all over. And I'm gonna try her methods. We're gonna do this together. We're gonna do some together today. Let's go dye some of this. I have an idea for some dish towels that I wanna do and I couldn't get a color that I wanted from Great Northern. And then I was like, okay, so last resort, I'll go look at Webbs because they have, I think it's Valley Yarns 8-2 cotton. And I looked there and I could not get the color I wanted there either because they're out. So I'm wondering if they're having the same problem, but I don't know if they're having the same problem. Either way, we're gonna dye some here. I bought a whole box of their white from Great Northern. Let me see how many this is. It was on the receipt. 
course I can't remember now. I bought 20 tubes and I believe there are 1,680 yards per tube. So we're going to have to wind this off into like hanks for dyeing and then we're gonna dye it like that. I seriously considered just winding it straight into a warp and like dyeing the warp but the thing is that I would have to separate it because I don't want all this color. You know what I mean? My warp is gonna have a pattern in it and so if I wind it into a warp and then I have to separate the strands, that is gonna be a total pain in the butt. So I'm just gonna wind it into big hanks, we're gonna dye it, and then I'll wind a warp with it after. That's gonna be a separate video. I think I'm gonna do a whole series on this particular set of towels, and I'm first gonna have to test what I dye and make sure it doesn't bleed, obviously. So we're gonna go through this whole process. It's gonna be a series. It's probably gonna take months but first, we're just gonna dye some of this. So let's go wind it into Hanks. Okay, I'm gonna set up my Swift. I'm gonna use my Swift to wind it. I feel like that's faster than using my Nitty Knotty, and I do it a lot. My Swift has five, wait, one, two, yeah, five different measurements that you can use for different size Hanks. So I'm just gonna set it up on the corner. This is where I usually do it. No, inevitably someone will ask me where I got it. It's from Hornshaw Woodworks. I will link it. And then I'll put in my pegs on the two yard hank measurement. And then this is gonna take a while, so I'll speed it up. I may not even do it in one go. All right, I don't know how long it took, but we're done. I'm gonna just break off a couple lengths and tie this up because I do not want it tangled. Obviously, that would be a bummer. So I'm gonna tie four strings, one on each side of my Swift. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a figure eight, so I'm gonna kinda divide it loosely in half and then tie it really, really loosely because I don't wanna create a resist where the tie is. And I did a square knot. So I'll just do that on each side. So you can see it, I'm dividing this up roughly in half, doesn't have to be exactly half. In fact, I'm gonna move Okay, so I'll take one end, go behind, through the hole, in front, and then back through the hole, just like this. So it creates a figure eight tie around that and just tie it in a square knot. So right over left, left over right. And the next step in the video is to wash this. I did not wash, I don't think, the first cotton yarn that I dyed, although I honestly can't remember. It's probably three or four years now. So, but in the next, in the video, the next step is to wash this. <sighs> okay, this light is really crazy, I'm sorry. I went to my Dollar General and I paid $4 for this white tub. That will allow you guys to see like if there's color bleeding off, how much dirt comes out when I wash it. That's why I needed a white one. First, we're gonna wash it with Blue Dawn. You know there's always Blue Dawn in my house. And then I'm going to soak it overnight in soda ash and water. And we'll get to that part next, but first we're gonna wash it. So let me get some hot water and angle you down towards the tub. All right, her tutorial said that she put a kettle full of boiling water in so I have boiled my kettle I just have a little one and we're going to add some of the blue dawn so a couple of squirts I also grabbed my heat resistant gloves these are not a must you can always like move that this around with the tongs or a tool utensil of some sort but nothing that touches the soda ash and the dye should be used for cooking. The dish soap is in. 
We're gonna plop this in here. I think she used less water, but it's okay. And then I'm gonna put the boiling water in. I'm gonna dump the whole kettle in. So hers, to be honest, looked a lot dirtier than mine. I just wanna really make sure the water and the soap gets all the way through everything. I'm gonna use a little bit of baby blue and I'm kind of debating. I think I'll use all three of these. So this is little boy blue, this is baby blue, and this is brushed steel. And I am going to, I'll mix them up with water and pour them in later, but just so you know, these are the dyes. I've had these for like 10 years. It's not like they go bad. Um, I bought them to dye some cotton fabric, which I did do, but I didn't like the first result and then I never tried it again. I'll tell you, this water is very, very clear. This does not look like it was dirty at all, but maybe it had oil on it, we don't know. I'm going to take this and rinse it in the sink and then we'll get the soda ash mixture ready for soaking. The yarn is rinsed. I rinsed it in hot water in my sink. I didn't film it because I figured you guys all know how to rinse things in your sink. And I'm gonna use this bowl. So the ratio is one cup of soda ash to a gallon of water. I wanted to tell you guys safety, always safety. You do not wanna breathe in soda ash. So I will be wearing my, let's see, I think it's an, uh, it's a P100. I'll be wearing my P100 mask that I use whenever I'm mixing dyes and that'll protect my lungs. I only have one hank of yarn. I'm gonna put a half a cup of soda ash in here and a half gallon of water. Again, this stuff shouldn't touch your food items. So this is from my dyeing stash. about clean. I'm gonna take off my mask now. There's no danger of breathing it in the air. And then I'm gonna just transfer this yarn and submerge it. And I'm gonna soak it at least until this evening. It's uh, 8, 17 a.m., at least until this evening, but maybe even until tomorrow morning, we'll see. We'll come back and dye it tomorrow. I'm so excited. If this works, you guys, this is like a game changer for me. Soaked this overnight. It's the next day. It's about 24 hours after I threw this in the bowl. I'm gonna take it out. Do not forget to wear gloves. There is soda ash in this water. It is caustic. Don't forget. <laughs> I'm gonna put my mask back on and I'm gonna mix myself three different measuring cups. So I've got, again, baby blue, little boy blue, and brushed steel, I think it is. Okay, the reason I'm doing this in a water bath is because I wanna try to get it to penetrate the whole thing. I'm gonna just pour them on. Like I said, I'm being brave today. I'm not being brave, I'm actually scared. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go like this. Okay. I did pour the whole thing on. Oh, I think I'm gonna go over here. Oh gosh, I do like this one. And then I'm gonna put gray along this edge, along, like kind of where they meet. Um, right here, 
And one thing about really the, the acid dyes do this too. If you don't let them fix, before you pour on another color, they'll kind of chase the other colors around. So now I'm gonna just kind of like scooch around my yarn because I wanna try and make sure that I get to the center. I know I said I was using her method and I'm totally applying the dye differently, but I don't know if I like this gray. I think I'm gonna add some more of the little boy blue because this is like way lighter than I thought it was gonna be. You know what? I lied. I'm going to I'm gonna sprinkle some sprinkle some on here. <laughs> That's right. I'm doing it. I'm done for now. I'm gonna come back in 24 hours and I'm going to kind of poke around in here and see what the color is looking like and if it's enough color for what I want. And if it is not, I will add more dye. So I'm gonna leave my dyes out. I'm gonna cover this with one of the lids and I'll see you tomorrow morning. I know this takes a while and I can understand if anybody's like, oh, this takes too long for me. So just remember, I normally won't be dying just one hank. I'll be dying like a whole bunch of hanks and it'll be kind of like this. I have a project on the loom, it's not even done yet, and I start dying for the next project. So I have plenty of time. We'll see what happens. I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day. It's like probably 23 hours. I'm gonna check this. My fear is that this is gonna fade more. It doesn't make sense. Let me sit back up a little. So I've read a lot of things and I've watched some different videos about dyeing cotton that say longer doesn't really make it more color fast. And again, I'm following um, Alex Victoria's like tutorial or process, whatever you want to say. So it should still show dye because it doesn't exhaust the way that wool does. I'm just really afraid the color is going to rinse out. Like I'm squeezing it and it's immediately getting a little bit lighter, but I think as it dries it would get lighter anyway. I'm sorry, I'm just like thinking out loud really. So I don't think I'm going to add more color because this is similar to the color I was looking for. I was looking for like a light kind of cornflower. This is lighter than cornflower and not quite as purple, but I'm pretty happy. And a little lighter would be better anyway, right? Because that's less chance of bleeding. And then there is some gray, like this patch is definitely more gray and there's a little bit more gray kind of over here, which is gonna be really cool when it's striped into a warp. So I'm going to leave it. One more day, tomorrow morning, we're gonna come and rinse it out. We're here to experiment. <laughs> we're gonna go for it tomorrow morning. I'm not changing anything, I'm not adding dye, I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm going to go dye eight hanks of sock yarn for the shop, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning. I waited an extra day because we were busy, we've been dyeing things in the house and dyeing wool, and so this just poor thing sat aside for an extra day. I'm gonna put on rubber gloves and then we're gonna rinse it. These are my heat resistant gloves because I'm gonna rinse it in hot. Alex soaked her yarn at the end for like a rinse to get the last little bit of color out and I figured the white will tell me more clearly than anything else. All right there's already some blue in here I want to dump it out. I'm gonna put some water in here and then we're just gonna soak it like half an hour. I am quite happy with the color of this. It's just like baby blue. That's really what I wanted. So I'm gonna leave this for like half an hour and we're gonna come back and see how much of the color comes out into the water. My concern is that when I added water with the dye and put it in a dye bath instead, 
I diluted the soda ash too much, but I think it's looking like it's gonna be fine. It's just gonna be light. All right, it's time to talk about our feelings. I am very disappointed in how much dye is in this rinse water and how light this is. I'm so disappointed right now, I can't even begin. to tell you. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse this really quickly so that there's literally no dye in it and we're gonna do it, we have to do it again. All right, we're gonna come back. This time it really will be in a half an hour. It was, it was ours because our neighbor came over to drop off a cake plate and we went to the grocery store. So what I thought was gonna be a half an hour was like four hours. I can't stop rinsing it until I know it's not gonna bleed more. I'm so disappointed in that color, and my fear is that I over diluted the soda ash soak when I added all that water and dye. I thought about it. John and I had a conversation about it. This is my saved soda ash water. I'm going to stir it up really quickly and then put this back in with dye. I, like I said, I'm just bumped. So let me grab it. I was okay with the color before that first like soak rinse. I don't know what you would call it, but like more color is still coming out. You can see more color is coming out. It's getting so light. It under, that's the soda ash water. And I'm going to mix up a little bit more dye and just like pour it into the water. Okay, I'm gonna get more water and I'm gonna do the baby blue and then do it in this half. Put the lid on and we will rinse it in the white tub. See you tomorrow. I was too busy yesterday so this ended up soaking for two days. We're gonna take it out and rinse it and I will use the white tub so that we can see how much dye is coming off of it. All right, here we go. Okay, it's been 32 minutes. Let's do it. Are you ready? All right, there is a little. It's not horrible. All right, um, well, I guess we gotta do this as many times as it takes to get clear water or it's just gonna run on the white. So it's still pretty close to the color that I was hoping for, but it just runs and runs. I'll be back in half an hour again. Okay, this one's much better. It's very faint. I'm gonna do one more rinse and I'm feeling better about this. I got busy today and I let this soak for the rest of the day. I'm just trying to figure out where to put my towel. <laughs> I am happy with how clear this water is now. It is so slight. It looks like I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see it on the screen. It's so slight. So I'm gonna wring this out and wrap it up in a towel kind of tightly and leave it that way. Ugh, can't get my glove on. And leave it that way for a while before I let this dry. I am really happy with the color right now. As it dries, it'll probably lighten a little bit, which is still okay. And I'll be back to show you what it's like when it's dry. All right, so I'm gonna come in close. I cannot say that I'm unhappy, but I could be happier. Let's put it that way. So I am gonna try this again, but I wouldn't call this a fail either. And I would say it's pretty close to the color I was trying to get. So I am okay with this and I'm going to use it, but we're gonna come at this again and try and do better. But here we go. I am really okay with it, but I feel like I can do better. I'm gonna use the same two colors. We're gonna try a different technique. 
wish me luck. I'll meet you back here to see it in a couple weeks. It's going to take me a couple weeks to get it done. I'm so glad to see you here. I hope you have a great week and come back for some more cotton dyeing. Thanks. I love you. Bye.